So today we pick up in 1 John chapter 5, verses 11 and 12. Am I on? Everybody hear me okay? Great. But last week we were looking at uh, the verses right before that. And let's see, we found out there's three that bear record of Jesus on, on earth. The water, water and blood and spirit. And those three agree with one. And it's really the witness of God that he is our Savior. Through the miracles, through the scriptures, we believe and we get to attain eternal life. But if we don't believe, we make God out to be a liar. And all there is for us is judgment. So don't forget, we aren't just taking verses uh, 11 and 12 on their own. They're a part of a letter written to us by the Apostle John. So we want to keep um, all these things in mind as we study. So today we're going to look at verses 11 and 12. 1 John chapter 5, verses 11 and 12. So let me read those together as we get ready to start through our, our message today. And this is the record that God has given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that has the Son has life, and he that has not the Son of God has not life. So, let's break it down verse by verse. The first thing I want us to look at is, this is the record. This is the, Pink's Bible said, testimony. Um, that word, the, it could be witness. I think some Bibles translate it witness. It's really just evidence, like you're presenting it in a court case. This is your, this is the testimony. This is the, the, the evidence presented. And what is it? What is the evidence given in? that's very convincing, that is persuading, that is factual and true, that God's given us eternal life. God has given us eternal life. So, number one, God has given us eternal life. This is the witness, the testimony, the record, the evidence. God has given us eternal life. Now, John has said this before in 1 John 2, 25. And, and this is the promise that he, God, has promised us even eternal life. He's told us that before in his letter. You remember, he's writing us a letter. He's told us that the promise is eternal life. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Now, the reason I changed that to eternal life instead of everlasting life that we kind of memorize as kids, it's the same word here, eternal. The same word eternal here in uh, 1 John 5, 11. In 1 John 2.25 and in John 3.16, they're all the same. It's eternal life. Okay? That's the record that you, me, anyone who believes on Jesus Christ, we receive eternal life. Now, the second thing is, he then just says, oh, where is that? This is the record, the evidence, the testimony, the witness that God has given us eternal life. That's the record. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Now, let's talk about that. This life is in his Son. Now, this life is the eternal life. But I'm just going to talk about life As the name of his son. His son is life. Okay? 
1 John 1, 1 through 3, Claire read to us this morning. Remember, um, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. <clears throat> he was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. His name, his, by his name, we have life. Now, this is interesting because this life is more than I think we give, uh, we, we really comprehend. Because this is life for everything. This life is life for everything. It doesn't matter if it's uh, these people in this room. It's every person who has ever took a breath of life. That's life comes from the word. See, let, let, let's go back to John, the, the gospel. Remember, uh, I'm trying to use God, John, the, the gospel, as much as I can uh, to try to understand John's letter. And look what, look what John records in John chapter 5. John chapter 5, verses 21 through 29. And we're going to take a little time on this section, but I'm going to read it as a whole to you. It says, uh, Jesus is, is speaking. And he says, uh, For as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so also the Son gives life to whom he will. The Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son, that all may honor the Son, just as they honor the Father. Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He who does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Truly, truly, I say to you, an hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. And he has given him authority to execute judgment because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for an hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice. And come out, those who have done good to the resurrection of life, those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. This life, this life that Jesus has is for everyone. See, he starts this out saying, the father raises the dead and the son gives life. Did the Father raise the dead during Jesus' life? Yes. We saw it. He touches Jairus' daughter. He brings her forth. Now he's saying, listen, listen. If you go back to verse 19, he says, Truly I say to you, the Son can do nothing of his own, but only that what he sees the Father doing. So he's saying, listen, the Father raises the dead. He's, he's banking on that, right? Because he knows uh, about this time, in about three and a half years, he's going to place all bets on it, right? And then, then, then down in verse 24, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, 
but has passed from death to life. See, whoever believes his word, he passes from death to life. He, he does not come into judgment. We, if we will believe, if we will hear God's word, hear the word of God speaking, that's Jesus Christ, the, the word of God made flesh. If we will hear that and believe, we will have life, life eternal. We've talked about that. Now, I already have life. Not thanks to mom and dad, but thanks to God. Because through Christ, I have life. But because of Jesus Christ, I have a second birth. And I have new life, life everlasting. See, we were dead spiritually, but then we become alive spiritually because of that new birth. Look what he says. Uh, Truly, truly, I say to you, an hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. Yep. Guess what? Jesus walked on this earth three and a half years uh, in ministry for 33 and a half total. He walked on this earth and some heard him and some didn't. This is a different here than just made the, the bones in my ear vibrate. This was a hearing that caused you from to pass from death to life. See, verse 26, For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. And that light, that life is the light for all men. But now this is the interesting part. We often think of this Jesus having the life as something that is reserved for Christians. Eternal life is. But this physical life, even after death, you get a resurrection. Everyone. Every single person gets a resurrection. Look what he says in verses 27 through 29. And God has given Jesus authority to execute judgment because he, Jesus, is the son of man. Do not marvel at this, for an hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice. All. All. How do I know it's all? Because he says, they will all hear his voice and come out. Those who have done good to life, those who have done evil to judgment. Everybody gets a resurrection. You know why? Because Jesus is life. That strong. That's why he says in John 11, when he's talking to, <laughs> who's he talking to, Mary or Martha? John eleven twenty five 25, to Martha. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? See, this is the thing. If I live, which I am, if I'm living and I believe him, I have another birth and I live forever. I'll never die spiritually. I may die physically. Maybe. 
There is a generation, according to 1 Corinthians 15, that walks life to life. But there, the, the, the fact of the matter is, uh, physical death is a death is, is just a, a transition. It's the, the second death that is permanent. Everybody will get a resurrection, some to life and some to death. Now, that's why Jesus, again, in John 14, 6, again, is saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He is the life. That's it. So, in uh, this life is in his son, Jesus Christ. That's the key to eternal life. It's not just the key to eternal life. It's the key to life, period. Physical or spiritual. Or uh, I'll say and spiritual. Let's, let's do and, not or. And spiritual. This is all put in to Jesus Christ, his son. Now, then he says this in, in uh, 1 John 5, 12. He that has the son has life. He that has not the son of God has not life. So <laughs> you can see I, I whited this out. I worked this through so many times, I don't know how many times. Um, I, I guess I want you to write in there, life. He that has the Son has life. I would rather us concentrate on that than to tell you and tell you that he that doesn't have the Son does not have life. But the fact of the matter is, he that has the Son has life. He that does not have the Son does not have life. Has. What does that mean? He has life. He that has the Son has life. To hold means to hold or possess. He that holds or possesses the Son holds and possesses life. That's why we can say, again, like... Um, Pat says we should probably revisit for John 3:16. We do. Because God so loved this world, this creation, this cosmos is the word there for world, this translated world. He loved this this divine creation. He loved it so much which we are the crown made in the image of him. He loved that so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting, eternal life. Earlier in that chapter, Jesus calls it being born again. John 3, 3 through 6. He tells Nick, you got to be born again. Two births, one death, max. One birth, two deaths. Right? Remember, last week, we looked at what John the Baptist had to say about Jesus in John chapter 3. Uh, so first part of John chapter 3 is Jesus and Nicodemus. Then Jesus goes on this talk about God loving the world and the believing on the Son. And then John the Baptist steps in and he says this, Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son of God shall not see life but the wrath of God remains on him. 
We read it last week. In chapter 10, he that believes on the Son of God has the witness in himself. He that believes not God has made him a liar because he believes not the record, the testimony, the witness that God gave us his Son. And in our in uh, John's gospel, after he tells us that this life in him was life and the life was the light of men, he says, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, the sons of God, power to become the sons of God, the right to become sons of God. New birth birth into a family where we are the children of God. Jesus is the only life, natural or eternal. He's the physical life that we all have. Remember that Yahweh, 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 even our breath speaks the name of God. Jesus really, that name Jesus is Jehovah. Yahweh is salvation. That's what Jesus' name means. Yahweh is salvation. And, and that speaks of the, the life of God. Believe in him and have the second birth. And the worst that can happen is you die once. Don't believe, and the wrath and judgment of God just sits on you. And the best you can have is one birth. Right? So, <clears throat> Frank sent this to me this week. And it's called, uh, God is not against, but for thee. He says this was a, a little, uh, I don't know, a poem or what do you call it? Poem inspired by 1 John 5, 11 and uh, 12. Let me, let me read what uh, uh, the Spirit inspired uh, Frank to write. God is not against, but for thee. Will you bow the knee? Will you say yes to God? Make that your earnest plea. Will you with him agree? I am the sinner of highest degree, born a sinner, captive to my own heart's rebellion. It's sin needing a deliverer to set me free. Will you, proud man, see how your rebellion, your sin, has offended holy God and destroyed the relationship between him, between him and thee? All the refinements of education, culture, nor arts can restore proud man from sin's separation and his soul's aching forlorn misery. Drug, nor success, nor wealth, nor pleasure, nor song can heal your soul from all that is wrong, though proud man seeks it through life, throughout life, be it short or long. May the Holy Spirit expose the root of the trouble, a rebellious nature that, and with its pride, within an attitude toward God that says, be damned, I can do as I please. In my own way, I choose to abide. I can live any way I want. There's no man or God, nor God, can rule my life. But God says, for this you shall surely die. For this stubborn, self-determined will, Jesus Christ came to die. Our religious sin-wrecked spirit to regenerate, our soul to rectify. Will you, proud sinner, listen to his call? Will you, with humbled, broken heart, believe his word and be restored from sin's devastation? Is death sentence pronounced upon proud man at the fall? Hear the preacher's message of God's love and mercy shown to you when Jesus Christ died upon Calvary's tree so you could be a forgiven for your proud heart's sin and have all your sins cast into the deepest sea. The penalty of your rebellion wiped eternally from God's slate. Believe in the Son of God, Jesus Christ, today, for tomorrow may never come for you. It may be too late. 
Listen to the Holy Spirit's call to come to Jesus and be forgiven. Receive Jesus and the gift of eternal life with him is freely given. He who has the Son of God has life. He who has not the Son of God has not life. I plead with you by faith end your rebellion. The source of your broken relationship with God. The real cause of all your conflict and strife. Come to the Christ and he will open your eyes to see. Will you humble yourself, proud sinner, and come to Christ with nothing in your hand but a yielded will on bended knee? Will you, rebellious sinner, hear his voice calling by his Holy Spirit to thee? Will you come to him and bow the knee? Choose life, not death. God is not against, but for thee. Now, with that, I'm going to end with Deuteronomy 30. Deuteronomy 30, verses 11 through 20, is kind of uh, Moses' swan song. Moses has got the children of Israel out of Egypt. He's getting ready to send them into the promised land. He's laid out the way things are going to be set up in this new world. This new land, he has given them the law of God that he received. And in verses 11 through 20, he writes this. For this is a commandment that I command you today. It's not too hard for you, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that you should say, who will ascend to heaven for us and bring it to us that we may hear it and do it? Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will go over to the sea and bring it to us that we may hear and do it? But the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart so that you can do it. See, I've set before you today life and good, death and evil. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you today by loving the Lord your God, by walking in his ways, by keeping his commandments and his statute and his rules, then you shall live and multiply and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to take possession of it. But if your heart turns away and you will not hear, but you are drawn away to worship other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you will surely perish. You shall not live long in the land, and you're going to over the Jordan, that you are going over the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life, that you and your offsprings may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice, holding fast to him, for he is your life and length of days, that you may dwell in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to give them. This is the thing. Choose life. Now, I get what Moses is doing here with this swan song that he set up the children of Israel for a physical place here on this earth. The message, though, today for us is the plan of salvation has been laid out. John, in his letter, has presented us life and death. Blessing and cursing. Forgiveness and judgment. Here we are near the end of 1, John 5, uh, 1 John's letter in chapter 5. It's time for us to choose life. It's time for those who hear. This is for YouTubers and Facebookers and and rumblers, and people on the website, and everyone right here. It's time to stop messing around with it, and it's time to choose life. It's time for us 
to love God, obey him, and hold fast to him. Quit messing around. Oh, 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 look, I, I, I've, I've um, stopped drinking. Who cares? What do you believe about Jesus Christ? That's what gives you life. Oh, I don't lie anymore. I don't, I don't cheat. Oh, who cares? What do you believe about the Son of God? Don't pretty yourself up and come sit in a pew and forget to choose life. So, if you ever had a doubt, today is the day to settle it. You need to ask me, come up here. You need to ask Les and Dad and Pink and Ed, any of the elders. You need to ask them, get up here. Come up and ask. People on the internet, you can email, email. Whatever you need to do, you need to figure this out. This is life and death, blessing and cursing, forgiveness or judgment. It's time to choose. So um, we're going to end with this, this little chorus. Um, My desire to be like Jesus. Chorus 191. But as we sing that, if anybody here, I know internet, you can't walk through the, the internet. But anybody here that wants to talk about this choice, this Jesus, this decision that must be made, come and talk about this today. So Chorus 191, My Desire. again, we fear death no more. The worst we can do is die physically, but we know we have a resurrection to life eternal. Lord, I pray that your spirit move. Your spirit move in every heart. Your spirit move people to come to their Savior, Jesus Christ, because we know no man can come to the Father except he draws him to the way, the truth, and the life. Heavenly Father, help us take this message out to the world that there is life, there is eternal life available, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You are dismissed.